Well, hello boys and girls. Welcome to SCC Kids Presents episode number three. And a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Love you, Mom. Um, today at SCC Kids Presents, we're going to be learning about Jesus through singing, through story times, through game time, through puppets, and a really, really fun lesson time. I just pray that your hearts would be prepared to hear whatever God has to say to you. Do you want to get started? Yeah, let's go. Good morning, friends. Teacher Melissa here. I hope that you have had a great week. I know that it's been crazy and we've been stuck at home, but we've been trying to do as much as we can um, to stay indoors, right? So, I've got a welcome song for you, and then, well, I've got kind of a surprise. Here we go, ready? Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. I'm happy to see you, and how do you do? Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. I'm happy to see you, and how do you do? So good morning, friends. I'm so happy to see you. I miss you guys so much. I hope you're doing well, and are you ready for the surprise? I wonder who's running our game today. It's a surprise. Pastor Dave didn't tell me. Let's go find out who it is. Come on, let's go. Well, surprise, boys and girls. It's Pastor Dave here with Game Time. And today we have a really special game. It comes in three parts. And you guys, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. I call it ballooning creations and I have a couple of pictures for for you if, if I'm gonna put up these are some ballooning creations and I want you to guess what they are the first picture is here you see that you guess it you guess what it is yeah that's uh, that's Bugs Bunny I don't know if you guys watch Bugs Bunny he's a little bit cheeky sometimes but uh, it's a fun cartoon to watch um, Got one more. Got one more picture I'm gonna put up for you. I'm gonna lean back here a bit, right here. You see this? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a monkey. And I like monkeys. I don't know, my mom calls me a mon monkey sometimes. Uh, just as I love to climb in trees and have a lot of fun. But today, I was going to want to teach you how to do your own ballooning creation. So part three of this, if you have, didn't get a chance to guess the, the third one, part three is like, it's almost like balloon charades. I'm going to start to put together one of these balloon creations and see if you can be the first one to guess what it is, all right? Okay, here goes. All right, first off, you take a green balloon. Let's we'll start to blow it up here. Not much, just a little bit. They can be round balloons. Um, round balloons work just fine. I go like that. Kind of squeeze it together like this. Spin it around so you have two, two things like that. Can you guess what it is yet? No? All right, we're gonna take, oh, we're gonna take a white balloon. Uh, it didn't work very well. Okay, just a second. Gonna take a white balloon. About the same amount. Just a tiny bit more. Just like that. Put that together like this. Oops! That didn't go well. Got another white balloon. Yeah, you gotta be really careful when working with these balloons because balloons can pop just like that. So, a white balloon there. There we 
we go. These two together here. Ooh, look at this, so far, so good. Anybody guess what it is? One last thing, one last thing we're gonna put, put together on this. Make it a little bigger like that. Creation here. Put this together. Oh, let's see here. Take this. Top like that. Get your parents to help you out with this. Spin it around. Tie it together. Bang like that. Any guesses yet what that might be? That. Picture that. Oh, let's see, do we have a, do we have a marker over here? Here goes, yeah. Any guesses yet? Okay, this might give it away here. I'll uh, give you a point of reference, I'm gonna draw a little. Hi uh, here. Go. Oh. That's right. If you guess Mickey Mouse. Congratulations, this is my ballooning creation. What a wonderful, wonderful, fun activity for you to do. If you were paying attention, you might be able to do this exact thing at home. I got a bonus one for you. And this is, this is good. I'm hoping this will help for Mother's Day if you haven't got your mom a, a card yet or something really special. You could make this if you got one red balloon. Take one red balloon here. Stop blowing, stop blowing. Here's a little trick. The little trick you do, put this over here like this. Kids, oh this is fun, this is exciting. This is a little trick. Put it right on the end there. All the way around. Make sure the tape is on the balloon. Really, 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 really good. Okay, and be really careful. Wait till it's stuck. Wait till it's stuck, and then you continue to blow it. Look at that! There's a heart, just like this. I love. You, mom, make sure you use lots of great tape and tell your moms you love her, love them, and have a really special Mother's Day. Thanks again. See you later. Okay, this is me. My name is Ethan. This is Ryan, my little brother. We're gonna sing. My God is so big. Okay. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God can do. The mountains are His, the star rivers are His, the stars were His handy too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong, so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. And you, and you, the mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his hand. It's a, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing God cannot do for you. Hi, 
SEC kids, this is Mrs. Acasio, and um, I'm happy to read you a story today about uh, a parable that Jesus taught in Luke 15 uh, verses 11 to 24 and this is um, called A Son Runs Away and it's about um, how Jesus loves us even when we make mistakes. So here we go. To, to illustrate this point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his two sons. Daddy. Yeah? This is getting boring. I will can you give me the money you have stored for me? I want to go do something fun. Are you sure? Yes. Um, okay. You'll have nothing for your inheritance. You okay with that? Yeah. Here's all the money I have saved for you. I hope you find what you're looking for. Okay. See you later, son. See you later. A few days later, this young, younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Fun things for sale. Fun things for sale. Okay. How much dollars is it? Um, for what? For all of this. All of it? Yes. Uh, how much money do you have? Can, I... you sh can you show me? Yep. Here you go. Hmm. Oh. You can have it all. Yeah. and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. I have no food. All my toys are broken. Even this pig food looks good. I just, I want to eat it. I just want to go home. I hope my dad takes me back. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Dad, Justice is here. What? Justice? No. No way. Justice? <gasps> Justice! You're home! Hey! <laughs> oh! Come! Let's go jump on the trampoline! What? But he chose to laugh. leave. That's okay. He's my son. You're both my sons. Let's go. Let's jump on the trampoline. Whoa. Oh. 
the Jesus connection. We can come to Jesus by asking him to forgive us when we've done something wrong. And I'll just say a little prayer. Dear God, thank you that you love us like the Father loved his Son. Help us always come back to you by telling you how sorry we are even when we've done things that are wrong. In Jesus' name, amen. We're back for another song, and this time my mom's going to help, and we're going to be singing this little line of mine. Okay. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. One more time. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. One more time. Shine your light for everyone. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine your lights for everyone. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine your light for everyone. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to SCC Kids Presents Puppet Time. I am Cody, and along with me, my favorite sister in the whole wide world, Wendy. Cody, I am your only sister. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't that make you feel special? Okay, I guess it does. As Wendy told you last week, I do like to refer to myself as the word whiz. Words are just fantastic. They are such a great way to communicate. Removes all of the guesswork. Do you like words as well? Yeah, we've learned the words hope and repent so far. Really cool. You should re-watch those episodes if you feel a little lost right now. Well, Cody, what is our special word for this week? The special word that we are going to learn about this week is parables. Oh, okay, Cody, just a second. I got him. Wait for it. What? Wait, Wendy, what do you have those cows there for? These are not cows. These are a pair of bulls, just like you asked for. <laughs> I said parables, not pair of bulls. Yeah, that's what I have here. Pair of bulls. <laughs> parables is all one word. They are stories that Jesus tells to communicate truth to us. Are you trying to be funny, Wendy? Oh, well, okay. No, but knock, knock. Okay, who's there? Interrupting cows. Interrupting cows, Sue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the word of the day, parables. Jesus would use human characters and objects to tell a story that would help us to understand something that we could see, couldn't see with our own eyes. Jesus told many parables throughout the Bible to his disciples to explain to them what his kingdom would look like. His kingdom? What does that mean? I have seen a lot of pictures of Jesus with his disciples in the My Children's Storybook Bible, 
And Jesus isn't wearing a crown in any of them. What do you mean his kingdom? Great question, Wendy. That is why Jesus told parables. To describe it, he used people and objects that we can see to describe something spiritual that we cannot see. Isn't Jesus kind to do that? I know I love to learn about Jesus in this way. There are still things that I don't understand. But when Jesus is my teacher, I have the best teacher in the whole world. Wow, Cody. Jesus is the best teacher in the world. And you are the word whiz. You are a great teacher as well. Well, Wendy, anything that is really worth teaching you about, I learn from Jesus. This word, word parable is really pretty special because Jesus used these types of stories to tell us more about himself. Yes, Wendy, parables are very special stories that Jesus told us and they are recorded right here in the Bible. You can read these parables and learn so much about Jesus and his kingdom. Like today, our parents will learn about God's kingdom being like a mustard seed planted in the ground and growing into a tree. Mustard? I love having mustard on my hot dogs. I love roasting hot dogs over an open fire. And I love spending time with my family and singing songs and oh, oh just... Oh, Wendy, you are really getting excited. Yeah. Yeah, Cody. Most of all, I love Jesus. And I really love how he tells us these stories called parables so we can know him and understand more about his kingdom. That is awesome! Well, boys and girls, I can't believe that our puppet time is over already. But there are lots of more exciting things to learn from Jesus. Let's all keep listening to what he has to say to us. See you next time, boys and girls. See you later. And happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. Good morning, SEC kids. My name is Mr. Daryl. Um, we're going to talk about some parables today. And that's the word of the day is parables. So Jesus spoke a lot in parables. He was teaching his disciples and other people. Um, he would use these short stories or parables to explain things, to tell them about God. And uh, today's parables are in, found in Luke 13, verses 18 through 20. The thing about parables is not everyone understood them, and understands them. And sometimes Jesus would tell parables and people would get very confused. The parables he was teaching to, uh, on were about the, what is the kingdom of God? And I guess a lot of people would have wondered, what's the kingdom of God like? Jesus was, uh, obviously doing all these miracles and all these people were wondering, are you the Messiah? Are you coming to bring a new kingdom? And when we think of kingdoms, when I read stories about kingdoms, well, usually there's might be a noble king or a, and there's a queen. Oftentimes, stories about kingdoms, there's knights of the kingdom or there's a brave and beautiful princess. Uh, that needs rescuing or she's the one that rescues. There's often the bad guys and they have to battle to save the kingdom. And I think a lot of people were hoping that Jesus was going to come and he was going to bring a new kingdom and get rid of the bad guys. The bad guys were the Romans at that time. He was going to rescue the Jewish people and bring this new kingdom, this new era. But the story or the parables Jesus was telling about the kingdom of God was very different. It must have been very confusing for some people. So yeah, let's go to Luke 13. And, and Jesus says, the first parable, what shall I compare the kingdom of God like? It's like a grain of mustard seed that a man takes and sows in his garden, and it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air makes nests in its branches. So I don't know if any of you have had the chance to do any gardening recently, but I've got a few seeds here. Let's just bring those closer to the camera 
So these are a basil seed. They're pretty small. And that's a mustard seed. I don't know if you can see those. Those are really tiny. And about five days ago, I took some of these basil seeds. And I put it in a little bit of dirt. About uh, five or six days ago, some water. And look, we've got some growth there. Isn't that amazing? And that basil plant, it'll grow maybe this big, become bushy. And there's beautiful leaves that we can put into food. It smells nice and it tastes really good. Even more dramatic is these little mustard seeds. I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard plant, but if you put it in the ground and water it, it begins to grow and grow and grow and grow. And it grows taller than me. And in fact, it can grow all the way as if there was two of me. So if you put me on top of me, that's how tall these things can grow from a tiny little seed. Can you imagine? And it's so big that it says even little birds can sometimes live in, in the bush. Hmm, that's an interesting story. And Jesus, so that's the first story, he says. It's like a little seed planted that grows. Then the next one, he says, Kingdom of God is like a woman who takes some flour, she adds some yeast to it, she leavens, the bread, leavens it, and then that is, then it allows it to make it into some dough. So I have here, some of you have probably tried helping your parents with some baking. Got some flour here, I've got some yeast here. Have you ever tried flour just by itself? Okay, let's get a try this here. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Maybe don't try this at home, but let's, let's give it. <coughs> oh. Um. <laughs> Whoa, that is not very good. Uh, it's made a big mess. No, I would not want to eat that at all. Uh, so what, I, what you do is you take something like yeast and you put on just a little bit of yeast. You add some water and some other ingredients. Whoa, yeah, flour all over the place. And a couple hours ago, we combined all those ingredients here it makes a beautiful dough. It smells nice. This is gonna make, we're gonna bake these into some beautiful buns or rolls and have that with our, with our meal uh, today. That tastes a lot better than this, this flour. So why would Jesus tell these two little stories, these little parables about the kingdom of God? We know from other parables that Jesus uses the idea of a seed he often, in the parable of the sower, the seed is the good news or the gospel. And we know that the gospel or the good news is that Jesus, who is the perfect son of God, he came to earth, and when he came to earth, he came to rescue us from sin and death. And that when we believe through faith that he died for us, that he was raised to life, that means we can be friends with God forever. Through that faith, um, we can be friends with God forever. And when we receive that good news, it's sort of like that little plant, that little seed being planted. It starts to slowly grow and it becomes something really beautiful and amazing. Sort of like that yeast. That good news starts to change our hearts. It changes our lives. And we can't even see it. So the kingdom of God from these parables, it's not really what we expect, is it? It's not a big uh, castles and kings and knights. It's Jesus came to bring uh, the kingdom of God was like a small little tiny insignificant thing that starts to grow. And you can hardly see it at first, but it starts to grow. And that's what happens in our hearts when we also share with our friends the good news that Jesus loves us and he came to save us. That starts to change them. And all of a sudden that can change families, that can change towns, that can change cities, that can change countries. It changes the whole world. 2,000 years ago, there was just a small number of people around Jesus. And now in almost every country, there are people that believe that he is the savior and, and will be friends with God forever. So that's the story. Let's let that good news 
be put, uh, come to life in our lives and change everything. So let's pray together, shall we? Dear Jesus, we thank you for your Bible. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your good news that changes everything, changes our hearts, grows. God, we thank you that you are the one that grows and changes us. And uh, we just ask that you will help us to believe you, to have the faith, and to share it with our friends and our family, and not to be afraid, but to be filled with your spirit and your courage. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Okay, thanks guys. Well kids, thank you so much for joining us for SCC Kids Presents this week, but it's time to go. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Miss you a lot. We're praying for you and hope to see you next week. Let's close the door now. Come join us next week. We'll see you. Bye.